What's up ladies and gents? Welcome back to the channel. It is yours truly, OG here, and today I'm gonna be reviewing the part 2 of Tree Below. And initially I was under the impression that this was gonna be a three-part series like Troll Hunters, but this doesn't seem to be the case, so uh, the Tree Below concluded with Part 2, and next up in the Tales of Arcadia trilogy, we're gonna have Wizards, which is gonna be releasing this year, I believe somewhere in December, and I believe Wizards is also going to be like two parts max, because I think that the idea of Troll Hunters to be three parts basically was to kind of build the world, do a bit of episodic fillers there and there, while when we compare Troll Hunters to Tree Below, Tree Below had a lot more uh, robust and ongoing story through all the episodes and really didn't have so-called filler episodes. Everything was very connected and this wasn't really the case with every Troll Hunters episode out there. So because the world is already very established and you kind of know a lot of the characters in the world, you don't really need to do uh, that much explaining and filler episodes to kind of like give an understanding to people what the world is about. And as I already explained in part one, Tree Below is focusing around two aliens who are extraterrestrials uh, from another planet who came into Earth and they are kind of like escaping from this guy named Val Morando who is this evil general basically and Val Morando eventually will come up in part two to Earth and then there will be the final showdown so to speak and you know part two it's pretty much like a very ongoing story. It doesn't have any fillers or anything like that. It has a bit of a character arcs and a bit of a build up, and they kind of learn a bit more about their parents and reason why they actually came to Earth. So there's a bit of a mythology or legacy or destiny, whatever you want to call it, behind uh, the reasons why uh, Krell and Aja are in Earth. And basically, we are not going to be seeing really any cameos. Uh, well, Ark will be, you know, making a two, three episode uh, appearance. Well, I think actually more than that, maybe four or five. And we don't actually see any Jim. We're going to see him a lot more in the Wizards part. I think that's going to be focusing him on a lot more and Claire. And there's also this gothic character which appeared on part one and he made a small cameo in part two. I'm gonna be suggesting that he might be one of the wizards. That's my uh, belief. Maybe our uh, <laughs> geeky duo also might be uh, becoming wizards. I'm not really sure. I mean, Toby already kind of got like a bit of an upgrade along with Claire. So I don't know if Steve and Eli are going to be getting some type of a power-ups actually in part three. I don't think they're going to be wizards. I don't, I don't think that they're going to be in a major focus in part three. It's going to be Claire and there's probably going to be two or three new characters that they're going to be introducing, which are going to be wizards, basically. And I think there's going to be a lot more at play with Jim, definitely. But um, when it comes to Tree Below, as like reviewing it as a whole and part two and part one, I think part two was better. I think it was a bit more action-packed. I think just general assumption is that it was better. This is the feel that I got. I don't really have any real arguments to say. I just feel that it was better than part one. Not significantly. I don't think that they were fundamentally too different. Obviously the timelines, uh, the timeline of part two takes after Troll Hunters, while the part one was kind of going on at the same time. And well, I think that was a good idea to break it down into two parts. Dragging the story for another 13 episodes would have not been smart. Uh, it's also interesting that one of the royalties will actually stay in the Earth in the ending and one of them will leave. So uh, we're going to be seeing kind of like a you know montage of all the characters in the last season, which, you know, collecting, introducing new, and then we're going to have a few from Tree Below and obviously from Troll Hunters. So that's going to be interesting. And I feel like I wish that in Wizards they would like flush out Angor a bit better. Like he had a bit of a flashback episode, but I think like, that could have been done a lot better, like his character overall in Troll Hunters. I think he was a very fascinating character overall, but he he kind of like needed a bit more of a, um, a role to play, and, and to be honest. And 
you know, was this tree below better than Troll Hunters? I don't think it was. I think that, I don't know, maybe it was the designs or something about the fantasy setting was more appealing to me than the sci-fi stuff. I mean, I generally like sci-fi, but I mean, I like Tree Below, but not maybe as a troll, not as much as Troll Hunters. I think Wizards is probably going to be better than Tree Below, but I mean, by all means, still watch Tree Below if you're a fan of Troll Hunters. I'm pretty, pretty sure you will enjoy it. The comedy and everything is quite similar. Um, I think there was a lot of Luke farting in this one, and I'm not really a fan of toilet jokes, but it's really a series made for the younger audiences, obviously, so uh, maybe it's appealing to them, but uh, this was kind of cringy. Um, one thing that I did talk about in the last season was that it is a clearly has a political agenda in this series because it's like, you know, the aliens are like, you know, alien immigrants and, you know, they are kind of like portraying the whole the Mexican thing. And obviously, uh, Krell is voiced by Diego Luna, which is Spanish uh, person or Mexican or you know, well, whatever, Spanish ancestry, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I think that it was uh, somebody made a good comment on Reddit about the fact that there was not really anybody challenging the idea in the series that immigration might not be a good thing. In the second part, like the army general of like the equivalent of FBI or whatever was just inviting like, uh, well, Morando can come here and will help us to, you know, uh, become the next rulers of the world. And we, we allow these bounty hunters like blast up and destroy places. Like this type of logic really didn't make sense really in the story. And like in the in the terms of like even like when we look at it from a lens of immigration, like why would you want to have these things uh, in your city, which is very peaceful, to have all these uh, things happening? And you know, overall, part two was pretty good. I think there was a couple of like very teary moments when the um, they are in that you know. Well, I can't really spoil, but when they are finding this sort of a core thing and they go inside this sort of a virtual world and there's the scene where the, the parents come to defend the children, that, that was very, very that was a very good moment in the series, probably one of the highlights. But it doesn't didn't have those very legendary highlights as Troll Hunters did. That's was pretty much that what I like Troll Hunters more is that he had these very amazing moments uh, when um uh, uh, Jim's like the friend died one of the trolls I can't remember his name right now but he died and he falls into the pit where he was fighting Angoroth like that was a very legendary moment like him passing and etc so there were a lot of those golden moments in Troll Hunters which Three Below didn't really cater and you know I, I can definitely see that maybe this like was necessarily wasn't meant to be a trilogy series from the beginning. Uh, Troll Hunters just became very popular, and it could have been just like Troll Hunters, basically. And Three Below and Wizards could have been like side stories and basically like additional season or something or story arc inside Troll Hunters instead of like being their own shows. But I mean, more to watch. It's not a bad thing. And the series finale, the thirteen episodes, ends on a cliffhanger where there is this sort of a well, um, probably a very major figure in part three, which is going to be, well, I don't know, it seems to be a mentor of teacher of sorts. And there he will be like asking, you know, basically Eli and Steve to join him, which is weird to me because I, as I said already, I made my assumption that they're not going to be wizards. But, you know, basically it's a saying that the Doom is coming and the Great War is about the beginning. And I think Merlin was already talking about this in the first, uh, in Troll Hunters already. So we knew that there was going to be some type of a big battle happening on Wizards. So I don't think this was a, like a big type of a reveal or anything that was going to be going down in part three. Also, uh, the female uh, character that they introduced on, on the part one already, who seems to be like a betrayer or something like that, that like element, like well, that was kind of like a weirdly played there. It just really didn't say, see much sense of this character and a lot of her interactions and the kind of like betrayal of um, uh, Varvatos Vex, like that, that, that arc didn't conclude there. That was, that was a bit weird. But um, that's kind of like wrapping up this review. I'm not going to make this any longer. Three Below is still worth watching. It's not exactly Three Below. And when, once Wizard starts, 
I believe Wizards timeline is going to be, you know, starting right after or predates or do it happens during the same time as part two of Three Below. So I think it's definitely must see in terms of the storyline. But There's probably some recap videos out there, but definitely I was not disappointed or anything like that. But it just didn't wasn't really reaching the same potential as Troll Hunters did with some of those very, very good moments. The final battle wasn't perhaps the most coolest one it could have been. And I think that was a bit of a problem with Troll Hunters, as I remember. Uh, the big bad evil, like, he, he wasn't very convincing. His son was a bit of a more of a um, main villain, to be to be honest to me. But uh, because they built up him a bit better, in my point of view. But thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time on the next review, whenever that may be. And I'll see you soon.